Hi there, welcome back. This is test one review for calculus two. Um, you'll see on the left there, I'm giving you the question pool I'll be taking questions from. Usually I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'm gonna be doing some questions from these uh, sets in the review here. And I'll take a lot of those questions and basically just change numbers around or change uh, like a sine to cosine and stuff like that. But uh, then, you know, to kind of uh, make it a little bit more hard, um, I'll be taking kind of random questions from these sets as well. Okay. But, uh, you know, the ones I do here in the review, you'll, you'll probably see something similar to those on the test. Uh, and then plus maybe a couple of random ones from from these sets. Uh, some assumptions I made about you guys, you should know all of this trig material over here to the right. Um, that first set this is the uh, Pythagorean identities uh, right here. These guys, you should know those. And usually all you have to do is know the first one and then you get the other ones just by dividing by sine squared or cosine squared. Uh, the second set of identities here are sometimes called the reciprocal identities or the quotient identities. You should know all of those from trig. And then the rest of those formulas you should know from calc 1. Um, you should also know basic derivative rules for uh, polynomials and uh, products and quotients and, uh, and uh, then uh, integrals doing u subs. Um, as well as integrals of, uh, you know, the polynomials, uh, the basic integrals that you would have learned in Calc 1, okay? So I presume you, you already know a lot. Um, if you don't know this stuff that's on the screen, please, please, please memorize it somehow. Make flashcards or whatever you have to do. Anyways, let's dive in here and start taking a look at some of the problems from the problem set. So again, I'll I'll be taking I'll, I'll probably take a lot of the problems I do in the review and just change the numbers a little bit and then kind of you know pick and choose uh, uh, several from from the uh, the question set. Um, that being said, if you if you only look at the problems in the review, you're probably not going to do all that great. You might squeak by, but. Um, it's in your best interest to kind of cover all these problems. If you've been doing your homework, you'll, you'll be fine. Okay, Just go back and find any ones that you can't remember how to do. All right, so anyways, without further ado, let's get into the, the test review. Um, so 5.7, first off, this is where we had the formula 1 over u du equals the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. So I expect you to have that memorized. Let's look at problem two. In problem two, you need to do a u sub. This is the most standard kind of natural log problem that pops up. You have something like one all over 18 minus nine x dx. And then you're just gonna try to get it into the form of the natural log. Um, the problems on my test are usually in order. Uh, so, so you won't have to worry too much about, you know, randomly generated problems uh, kind of confusing you. So anyways, uh, I'm going to let the denominator be 18 minus 9x, and then du will be 9, negative 9 dx, and then get our differential. dx is negative du over 9. Okay, let me box that off. And so I'll have the integral of... Um, lost something. Sorry. I'm looking for it. I don't see it. Great. Oh, great. Oh, I found it. Okay, so one second. Sorry. Um, okay, so I'm replacing the 18 minus 9x with a u, and then I'm replacing dx with negative du over 9. Um, I'm going to factor out the constant, negative 1 9 and then you have the integral in the form of the natural log. So you'll have negative 1 9 ln absolute value of u plus c, and then back sub, and you have your answer. Okay, so there's all kinds of ways I could transform this and put it on the test. So for example, you know, maybe I would write um, 34 all over 2 uh, plus 3x dx. Okay, um, so it's basically the same problem. I just I'll just manipulate it a little bit and 
uh, hopefully you'll be able to get through it. And, and again, I will be taking maybe, you know, instead of doing problem two, maybe I'll, I'll include problem uh, seven or something like that, you know. All right, so anyways, let's, let's look at uh, maybe two more examples from this section. Problem three, I like this one because it's a long, it, it forces you to do long division. Um, there's ways around it, but uh, I think it's easier just to do long division. So you have 2x squared plus 4x minus 7 all over x minus 5. Okay, So I'm going to do my long division down here. 2x squared plus 4x minus 7. So I say what times x is 2x squared? Well, that would be 2x. So I have 2x squared minus 10x, and then I subtract these guys. So I have 4x plus 10x is 14x, bring down the next term, and then ask yourself what times x is 14x? So that would be plus 14. So I'll have 14x minus 5 times 14, which is 70, and then I subtract these terms again. So I'll have negative 7 plus 70 is 63, and then I can transform the integrand, the, the guts of my integral, into... Um, 2x plus 14 plus 63 all over x minus 5 dx. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and then uh, integrate those parts. So the integral of a sum is a sum of the integrals. Um, the first part is 2x squared over 2. I'll just write x squared. The next part, 14x. And then this last guy, you, you could factor out a 63 and have the integral 1 over x minus 5 dx. Okay. That guy is a natural log. If you don't see it, you need a u sub. So x minus 5. It's always safer to do u subs, in my opinion. Uh, dx is just du, so there's nothing extra I need to do there. So I'll have x squared plus 14x plus 63 uh, times the integral of 1 over u, and then dx is just du. So you see that last term is a natural log. So I'm getting x squared plus 14x plus 63 ln absolute value of u plus c, and then back sub. Okay, um, one of the good things about these uh, uh, natural log integrals is that it opened up a door for us. In particular, if you look back at the integrals you have memorized, you would expect kind of to have the integral of sine, the integral of cosine, the integral of tan, but it really didn't work that way, right? You end up having to settle for the integral of secant squared and the integral of cosecant squared. Um, as well as the integral not of secant, but of secant tan. So. Um, in this section, we're able to now expand upon our list of integrals and include then uh, the integral of tan x dx and the integral of secant x uh, dx. Um, the integral of tan x is the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus c. Um, I would expect you to kind of have this one memorized. If you don't have it memorized, you should at least remember that tan is the same as sine over cosine and then kind of proceed from there, okay, with a u sub. Secant, I wouldn't expect you to have that memorized. If it comes up on a test, I will give it to you beforehand, but it's the ln of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x uh, plus c, okay? All right, so let's look at problem number eight. So this is kind of like a trig problem. The integral of cotan of theta all over five d theta. So you probably don't have this one memorized, but you can always convert it using one of the, the quotient identities, right? So cotan is the same as cosine of theta over 5 all over sine of theta over 5 d theta. And then you could do a u sub for the denominator and turn it into a natural log. So du is going to be cosine of theta over 5 times 1 fifth. Let's put the 1 fifth in front d theta. Solve for d theta. I'll have 5 du all over cosine of theta over 5. Okay. So we'll end up with the integral of cosine of theta over 5 all over u times d theta, which is now 5 du all over cosine of theta over 5. There's your nice little cancellation. Goodbye, goodbye. 
factor out of 5, and you have the integral again of this 1 over u du. Okay, so that's going to be 5 ln absolute value of u plus c. And then back sub, you get 5 ln absolute value of sine of theta over 5 plus c. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move on to 5.8. So 5.8 gives us two two more formulas to worry about. In particular, um, the uh, the uh, inverse trig formulas, right? So there's two of them that I need you to have memorized. Du all over the square root of a squared minus u squared. That will be your arc sine of u over a plus c. And then I need you to have memorized du all over a squared plus u squared equals 1 all over a arc tan of u over a plus c. Okay. So get those memorized if you don't already have them. Um, let's look at one of each. So problem six, we have the arc sine type. Um, here's a secant squared x all over the square root of 9 minus tan squared x dx. I'm going to do a u sub on tan. Okay. And then you see the derivative is sitting in the numerator. That will set us up for a nice cancellation. Right. So I'll have the integral of secant squared x all over the square root of 9 minus u squared times dx, which is now du all over secant squared x. There's our nice cancellation between the secant squares. Um, I have the integral then of du all over the square root of 9 minus u squared. The a value here is 3. So I'll have arc sine of u all over 3 and plus c. And then that will give me the arc sine of back subbing tan x all over 3 and then plus c. And then you're done. Okay. Let's look at one of the other types. We'll actually do an, a, a definite integral here. So remember, the problem number six is indefinite when you're just getting basically the antiderivative plus a constant. A definite integral gives you a number out, right? So you'll have to you'll see the limits on the integral symbol here. I'm going from pi over three to pi, and then I have sine x all over one plus cosine squared x dx. Okay. All right. I'm going to do a u sub for that cosine. So du, remember this is negative, negative sine x dx. And dx will be negative du all over sine x. Let me quarantine that. Drop the limits on the integral, because now we're in terms of u, not in terms of x. Um, in the top I have sine x all over 1 plus u squared, and then times negative du over sine x. So you need those nice cancellations. Boom, boom. Factor out the negative. And you have 1 all over 1 plus u squared du. Okay. Um, the a value here is just 1. So you have negative 1 over 1, or just 1, um, times arc tan of u over 1, which is just u. And then I have to remind myself to evaluate this thing. Okay. So don't forget to evaluate. Oh my. Oh. Okay. So um, at the back sub before I can evaluate, you can't plug pi over 3 and pi in there. Those are x values. So you're literally integrating from x equals pi over 3 to x equals pi, not u. You could change those. You probably learned how to do that in Calc 1. I never bother. I just always back sub first and then evaluate. Okay. So now I could put my uh, limits back in and then try to evaluate. I'm probably going to need some sort of uh, approximation, but um, this will be cosine of pi. I could do that part. And then minus negative will be plus arc tan of cosine of pi over 3. So I could, I could simplify you know, parts of it, but some of it I'm not going to be able to. Anyways, this will be negative arc tan of negative 1 plus arc tan of cosine of pi over 3, I believe, is 1 half. Okay. Um, arc tan of negative 1 is negative pi over 4. 
So again, you're, you're always asking here, if you want to do an arc, uh, an inverse uh, trig function, it's, you always ask yourself the tan of what angle, we'll say theta, is equal to negative one. Okay. And they all have different kind of ranges to make them one-to-one uh, -one functions that are invertible. So um, for arc tan, the uh, range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that theta value needs to be in that range. And in particular, the only theta value that would give you negative 1 is pi over 4. But you can check it on your calculator anyways. Um, negative pi over 4, sorry. Okay. So anyways, it'll be negative negative pi over 4, which is positive pi over 4, plus arc tan of 1 half. Unfortunately, 1 half is not one of our known kind of uh, reference values. So I'll, I'll leave that one, and then I'd probably put it in my calculator and get an approximation. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move on then to 5.9. In 5.9, we're introduced to all of these... Uh, hyperbolics. So let me list out all the hyperbolic junk that we need to know. Let me pause the video. Okay, so um, there's all the, you need to have the hyperbolic uh, derivatives and the corresponding integrals uh, encoded into your brain. If you already know the trig versions, um, then these are pretty easy. It's just the signs are different, right? So uh, for the trig, the, the way that the signs kind of work is these guys are negative, right? And, and then for the hyperbolics, it's just the, the first column is positive, and then it's these guys that are negative, okay? So uh, you need to have all those encoded. Um, let's look at a derivative and, and then an integral type. So first uh, derivative type, so y equals ln of cinch of x. So you should know the derivative of the natural log. That should be another one that you should have memorized. So, I mean, we could go up here and attach those to our, our list here. You could say, all right, I need to have, um, I need to have the derivatives of those. The derivative with respect to x of the, uh, let's make it more general, right? The derivative with respect to u of the ln of u is 1 over u times u prime. The derivative with respect to u of e to the u is just e to the u times uh, u prime. So clearly we should know those. Um, anyways, this guy, uh, it's always 1 all over u, so 1 all over the guts, which is cinch, and then times the derivative of the guts, which is cosh. Um, and then all the reciprocal and quotient identities work the same here for the hyperbolics. So, I mean, I would be fine with this answer. That's fine if you want to write it as cosh x over cinch x. But uh, you, you should be able to, to notice that this is actually coth x. Okay. Um, let's look at number seven. So the integral of coth x dx. So, again, this is one of those ones where it's not kind of embedded in the uh, elementary derivatives and integrals, you would expect to have the integral of cos and the integral of tanch, tan but you don't, right? So what you're going to have to do then is use that identity that I just noted, that, that uh, quotient identity. So I guess you do have to kind of know those uh, cinch x uh, dx, okay? So, you know, to the side, you should, you should recognize that cinch x is equal to 1 all over cos each x, etc., right? Uh, cosh is equal to 1 all over sech. Um, tanch is equal to 1 all over cos, which is the same as, uh, as a quotient, cinch over cosh. And then, you know, need I go on, right? So cos each x is 1 over cinch. Um, sech is 1 over cosh. And then uh, cosh is 1 over tanch, which is just, of course, cosh x all over cinch x. Okay, So you should know those. Um, anyways, here you're going to have to do a u sub on cinch. du is cosh 
x dx and then dx is du all over cosh x um, all right so this will end up being then the integral of uh, cosh x all over cinch which is u times dx which is du over cosh a nice cancellation there boom boom and then you turn around you have the integral one over u du and then that's just the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c and then back sub okay. so uh, yeah so let's move on to 6.1 so 6.1 is an introduction to differential equations um, we checked we did some checking solutions uh, initial condition problems and just plain old uh, solve the differential equation what we noted is basically any time you find an antiderivative you're you're solving a differential equation so for example uh, problem nine you have dy all over dx equals e to the x all over 7 plus e to the x. So to, to solve this, all you need to do is find the antiderivative of the right. In other words, integrate it, right? So you'd have y equals the integral of e to the x all over 7 plus e to the x dx. And then you could do a u sub on this guy, 7 plus e to the x. du is e to the x dx. And then... Um, dx courses du all over e to the x. Okay, so I have the integral of e to the x over u times du over e to the x. Looks like it's going to be another natural log type. e to the x is cancel, so I have 1 over u du. That will be the outline of the absolute value of u plus c, so it's a general solution. And then back sub ln absolute value of 7 plus e to the x plus c is your solution. To that differential equation. Okay. Um, let's look at number 10. So number 10 is evidence of why you need to have those Pythagorean identities down. Um, all right. So anyways, y is equal to the integral of 7 tan squared x, right? dx. Okay. I don't know how to integrate tan squared, but I do know how to integrate secant squared. So if there's some way to turn tan squared into secant squared, that would be great. And there is, right? So um, you remember your Pythagorean identity is cosine squared plus uh, sine squared x is equal to 1. Divide everything by sine squared, um, or rather cosine squared, you get 1 plus uh, tan squared equals um, secant squared. And then you could solve for tan squared equals secant squared x minus 1. So you're just replacing tan squared with secant squared x minus 1 dx. And then I know how to integrate that, right? So the integral of secant squared is just tan x. The integral of 1 is just x, and then plus c, and then you could distribute and make it look pretty. OK. OK, so. Um, you know, so, so that it's a shocker. Look, anytime you did an integral, you're actually kind of solving a differential equation. No big deal. Um, let's look at 6.2. So 6.2, then um, we were introduced to our first uh, mathematical model, uh, y equals ce to the kt, which is derived from the differential equation dy over dt equals uh, ky. Right. The change of the population is proportional to the population. But for us, we, we just need basically this formula memorized. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the problems in, in my set, there's those chart problems and the, the uh, um, carbon dating problem is very famous. So the carbon dating problem, I, I won't read it, but you should probably go back there and read it. It'll tell you the half-life of uh, carbon is five seven five seven sorry i butchered the five one five years um, then they tell you in this piece of charcoal they find there's only basically 30 percent as much uh, carbon in it as there is in uh, a living tree right so they want to know how old is the tree based off that so let me write that up they they find uh 
piece of charcoal, which is basically a piece of burnt wood. Find a piece of charcoal, I don't know how to spell charcoal, with 30% um, of the, the um, standard amount of carbon for a tree. And then they want you to find out how old is the tree. Right. So, the, the, you know, um, carbon dating uh, is really a cool way of figuring these kind of problems out. I think that they tried to figure out the Shroud of Turin, see if that was really a, a religious artifact or not. Um, and they use carbon dating there. Anyways, you have to start with this formula y equals ce to the kt. And then first you could use a half-life to get the uh, growth constant. In this case, it'll be a decay constant. So you know in 5715 years, which is the T value, the amount of uh, carbon is one half the original amount. So, you know, again, what is the original amount? That's that C value here. That represents the original amount. So what they're saying is basically plug in 5,715 for T. So I have CE to the 5715K. Uh, and then after uh, that much time, there's only going to be half the original amount left. And um, it looks like there's two variables here, but you could divide both sides by C. Um, I'll do that and then flip-flop sides. And now you have an equation in one unknown, and you just take the natural log on both sides. So you get 5715k equals ln of 1 half, and then divide by 5715. So you get k equals ln of 1 half all over 5715. And then we could rewrite our equation as y equals c e to the t ln of 1 half all over 5715. Okay, um, now they want to know uh, how old is this piece of uh, charcoal, right? And what the problem is telling us is that it has 30% less of the kind of standard carbon. And basically, if you find out how long it would take for, for that much carbon to uh, decay, then you would know how long the tree is. So originally, it would have the same amount as maybe a tree that's, that's sort of still alive. So we'll just say that amount is C. And then we have e to the t ln of 1 half all over 5715. And then after so many years, we don't know how many years for that t value, the, the t value, we don't know what that t is. After uh, you know unknown years, 30% of the original amount goes away. So when you hear that word of, that means to multiply. This, this is my of, that means to multiply. Okay, so it's as a, a decimal 0 0.3 of means to multiply times the original amount, C. And now we have kind of the same scenario that we started with on the problem when we were working with the half-life, you just divide both sides by C. Um, I'm going to flip-flop sides and take natural logs. On the left, then, uh, the ln and the e cancel, so you got t ln of 1 half all over 5715. And then on the other side, you, you just have the ln of 0.3. Uh, multiply by reciprocals, so you get t equals 5715 ln of 0 0.3 all over ln of 1 half. Okay. And then chug that into your calculator and get to the nearest year. The problem says 9927 years. So everybody who takes science and math um, should know how to work with a, a carbon dating problem. It's, it's kind of like everybody knows how to do that. Uh, but there, there it is. Okay. A anyways, let's look at number 10. I want to look at number 10 because it's actually a doubling uh, problem instead of a half-life problem. So the, the growth constant is positive in this case. Um, it's a financial problem. You're investing $10,500 into an account. 
um, they want you to figure out the rate given the doubling time so the time the double is going to be uh, 14 years and then they want you to use the formula to predict um, the amount of money you'll have in your account after seven years right okay so again it's this formula y equals c e to the kt um, and, and we start with the doubling time that's really the only thing we have so uh, instead of saying that after so many years it, it, we have half of the original amount now we have twice the original amount so in 14 years so plug in 14 for t we'll have uh, two times the original amount where that original amount again is c okay so we could divide both sides by c um, i'm going to flip flop sides too so I get uh, e to the 14k equals 2. Natural log it. Uh, ln2. And then divide both sides by 14. Um, then I could rewrite uh, my formula. I actually know the c value this time, so I could plop that in while I'm at it. And um, then I need to know how much I have after 14 years, right? So I just plug 14 into that formula. Oh, no, sorry, I want I, seven years. So I plug seven into that formula. Please let me erase that. So you'll have 7 ln 2 all over 14. Um, that will be, uh, using my calculator, 14849 to the nearest cent is 24. I think in WebAssign, I actually had to use, I, I wasn't allowed to really use uh, an approximation for that k value. The k value, if you, you you need it for the rate anyways, that rate is the k value that they're asking for. This this number that we just got is the amount after seven years. So we would have $14,849. Um, the rate is from the k value. So if you go to your calculator, this thing is gonna be like uh, approximately 0 0.0495. As a percent though is what you need the right. You move the decimal two places to the right and you get 4.95 percent. Okay, so anyways, uh, you know, a little bit different. I don't think I did one of those in class. So if you were worried about it or you didn't get it, that's that's kind of how you do it. Um, anyways, let's move on to 6.3. So 6.3 was our first kind of technique for solving differential equations called separation of variables. Okay. Um, so let's look at you know one or two of these uh, just the kind of the standard and then an initial condition type so here I have xy prime equals 39y so one of the issues with a separation of variable is knowing when to stop and list your answer like again um, if you have an ln you want to exponentiate to get rid of it so kind of get rid of uh, of ln uh, y so it's just y equals and, and avoid then taking square roots so avoid um, if you have y squared equals I don't know 2x plus c avoid having to go y equals plus or minus square root of 2x plus c right um, okay so number four is basically one of these ln types so let me rewrite it a little bit. dy over dx equals 39y. I want to avoid moving the constants to the y side. And, and uh, anyways, I'm going to move all the x to one side, all the y to the other. So divide both sides by y. You get dy over y. Um, divide both sides by x. You'll have 39 over x. Multiply both sides by dx, and you'll have that. Um, then you want to integrate. On the left side, you have that ln absolute value of y. You do not want to leave that, okay? You're going to have to get rid of that thing and exponentiate it. So on the other side, I'll have uh, factoring out the 39 and 1 over x dx. That'll be another natural log. 
ln absolute value of y equals 39 ln absolute value of x plus c. Okay, so again, you want y equals something when you, when you have that natural log on the y. And to do that, we do exponentiation. Right? So on the left, I'll have absolute value of y. On the right, I still have a little bit of work to do. Um, right? So first, I'm going to uh, uh, separate it and, and uh, flip-flop it. So I get e to the c times e to the 39 ln absolute value of x. And then, you know, you're tempted to kind of try to reduce it here, but you can't. You have to do a power rule on the 39, okay? So you'd end up with the absolute value of y equals e to the c times e to the ln of the absolute value of x to the 39th power. Then I'm going to simplify a bit more. Absolute value of y equals e to the c. And now you can get the e and the ln to cancel. Absolute value of x to the 39. Drop all the absolute values, replace it with a plus or minus on the right. And finally, then, you could replace this plus minus e to the c with just a big constant c. So you get y equals c x to the 39. OK. OK. Um, let's look at uh, one, uh, another one here. Um, the, the integral in here is. Tricky. So, anyways, 12xy prime minus ln of x to the fourth equals zero. So, um, I want to isolate the y the y prime part uh, on one side. You know, and I and uh, you know separate. So, I'm going to move the ln of x to the fourth to the other side. I get 12xy prime equals ln of x to the fourth. Of course, y prime is dy over dx, and I'm going to move the 12 over. I always take those those constants to the to the x side. Okay, so I have dy um, over dx, and of course I'm moving the uh, 12x by dividing it on both sides. I'll move the dx as well, so dy equals ln of x to the fourth all over 12x dx. And then we can integrate both sides. So on the left there, I'll have a, a y. Um, on the right, I've got to do a u sub. Um, and for this case, it'll be that, that numerator. Um, you can do a power rule and simplify it a bit. I'm, I'm just going to go at it. So ln of x to the fourth. du is going to be 1 all over the guts times the derivative of the guts. And that will be 4 all over x dx. So there's a dx in there as well. Okay, so dx will equal x all over 4 du. And so I'm going to factor out the 1 twelfths. I did a u sub for ln of x to the fourth. It's all over x times x all over 4 du. Okay. There's another factor of 4 then I can, I can uh, move out. What happened? Nothing. Um, so I'll have y equals 1 all over 48, um, integral of u du. Then, um, seems like I made a mistake somewhere. No, I think it's right. Um, anyways, uh, I'll have y equals, I may have to look online there to see if it's right, um, 1 over 48 u squared all over 2 times u squared over 2 plus c. That will give me um, y equals back subbing ln of x to the fourth squared all over 96 plus c. And then you, you got to use, there's an initial value with this one. It's y of 1 equals 39 that's given in the problem. So 39 will equal y of 1. So ln of 1 to the 4th in here, it'll be ln of 1 to the 4th. 1 to the 4th is just 1 over 96 plus c. ln of 1 is 0. So you're going to up with c equals 39. And then we could rewrite our solution. Let me put it right over here. y equals um, ln of x to the 4th squared all over 96 plus 39. Let me pause the video, go online, make sure that's right.
Uh, yeah, that's right. Let, let's just, for, for the sake of showing you one of these ones where I don't want you to be taking the square root, let's go back and do one of those. Um, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, some problems like number seven there. So it'll be 16 y, y prime. Seven. Um, 16 y y prime minus 5 e to the x equals 0. Uh, again, it's just a separation. Um, 3 y y prime is dy over dx. Move the 5 e to the x to our side. I'm going to move the 16 as well. Move the dx over as well. Oops. So what do I get? 5 sixteenths e to the x uh, dx. Integrate both sides. So you get y squared over 2 equals 5 sixteenths. The integral of e to the x is e to the x plus c. I mean, that's your answer right there. There's no, again, there's no need to get y equal something in these cases because you're, what you're going to end up with is a plus or minus square root, which is kind of annoying. Okay. So you can leave it there. Some people don't like to multiply by the 2 and get rid of it. So y squared equals 5 eighths. Um, but some people like to get rid of all the fractions. So if you multiply by 16, um, you get another answer. 8y squared equals 5e to the x plus c. Um, either of those answers is good. Um, well, I just want you to avoid taking square roots on these guys. Some teachers are okay with it, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> uh, 6.5 then is our work in uh, first order linear differential equations. So you should have this form kind of memorized because if you want to solve one of these, it needs to be in this form. Uh, then you, you also need the integrating factor, correct? And you have to do the method I showed in class and that they show in book. Um, some, every year somebody tries to just memorize the formula and I'm not cool with that. Um, no memorization of the, the crazy formula in the book. Um, I could show you which formula th that I'm talking about. Uh, it's, it's like every year somebody tries this on me. Uh, don't, don't be that guy, right? Um, let's see, it's in chapter six. And do, 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 first order linear. Yeah, so, so it's, um, I don't even know what formula it is. It's this guy. People always try to pull that, and it's like, no, that's not going to work. I'm sorry. Um, no, I want you to have this process memorized, and it's important because if you are misfortunate enough to have to take partial differential equations, there's some pretty hefty um, problems in there where being able to identify sort of the antiderivative of a product is important. So I, ne I need you to learn the process um, more than just memorizing that, that formula in this uh, scenario. Okay, okay. so uh, let's take a look at number three. And we have y minus 240 sine x dx minus dy. So this kind of setup is what they call a differential form. Um, basically, you don't see that dy over dx thing. Uh, you need that for our form. It's before you can apply this, this method, you need to get it into the, the form that I have listed above there. So first off, I would probably divide everything by dx. So you get y minus 240 times sine x. The dx would be uh, divided out minus dy over dx. And then 0 divided by dx is just 0. Um, still not in the right form. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the sine x. So I'd have sine x times y um, minus 240 sine x and then minus dy all over dx. So you need three terms just like the formula above. Um, I'm going to move the dy dx over the other side, move the sine x times y to the other side. So that'd be minus uh, sine x times y. And then on the other side, I, I have still the negative 240 sine x. Okay, so in this case, the p of x is 
uh, whatever's in front of y, in this case it's negative, negative sine x. So I need to see the mu value, that's e to the integral of this negative sine x, dx, and uh, then integrate that. So e to the negative, uh, well, just cosine x, right? Okay, then I multiply through by that thing. Um, so I'll have e to the cosine x dy over dx minus e to the cosine x sine x times y. And that'll equal negative 240 um, e to the cosine x sine x. Okay. On the left, that thing collapses, and you get the derivative with respect to x of e to the, it's always mu times y, so mu is e to the cosine x times y. On the right hand side, you'll have uh, the same thing, negative 240 e to the cosine x sine x. Then we integrate both sides with respect to x. I'm going to slice that guy, pretending I factored out the 240, negative 240. Um, on the left, the integral and the derivatives act like inverses of each other, so you'll just have e to the cosine xy. On the right, you're going to need a u sub for the exponent of e. That's the cosine x part. There's a negative that's going to be floating around. Okay, so I got negative 240 integral e to the u times sine x times negative du all over sine x. So I have e to the cosine x y equals net positive now, because I'm going to factor out that, that negative, positive 240. And then the sine x is cancel, and you have e to the u du. So I got e to the cosine x y equals 240 e to the u plus c. Uh, back subbing. And then finally, isolate y. y equals something, right? So you just divide everything by e to the cosine x. And the constants won't absorb anything with a variable, so you're just left with that. OK. okay um, so be able to handle those. Let's skip now to chapter 7. So uh, 7.1 was finding the area between the curves. And the basic integral that you need to know is the top curve minus the bottom curve. Okay, you need to be able to do it in both orientations. So the uh, uh, vertically oriented and then the horizontally oriented. Let's look at number five. You also need to do a sketch of the graphs on these. Okay, okay. they don't need to be perfect. You just need to sketch them. So y equals x squared is a parabola like this, y equals 2 minus x, so where is that? The, the y-intercept's at 2, and then you go down 1 over 1, down. so it has a negative slope like this. Okay. So the region we want is this region, and if you think about your Riemann man, um, we're in the uh, vertical orientation, so everything's in terms of x, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, we, we also need then um, these points, a and b, where they intersect the x values there. So you take the x squared and set it equal to, to the other equation, 2 minus x. Um, solve this. So I've got a factor here. x is negative 2, x is 1, and then go ahead and integrate from negative 2 to 1. The top curve is the 2 minus x, and then the bottom curve is the parabola. Integrating, evaluate the antiderivatives, uh, negative 2 squared is 4, divided by 2 is 2, this will be plus 8 thirds, and then um, what do we got, 2 uh, plus 6, that's 8, negative 1 third minus 8 thirds is not negative 9 thirds, which is negative 3, and then minus 1 half equals 5 minus 1 half. 10 halves minus 1 halves is 9 halves. That 9 halves number just keeps coming up. 
Let's look at one of the other orientations. So something like number eight is oriented uh, horizontally. They give us a couple functions, y equals x, y equals four minus x, and then y equals zero. Got to figure out the region. Okay, so y equals zero is just the x-axis. Y equals x um, is the diagonal. So it's just going to go through here, 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 here. And then y equals four minus x has a y-intercept at four, and then it goes down one, over one, down one, over one, and it's gonna intersect at positive four. Um, there's two ways to do this. You can integrate and chop it up into two parts. Um, I am of the opinion that you should just integrate by going up the flagpole here. Okay? So consider then, um, horizontally oriented rectangles. And so your top curve is going to be um, this blue curve. And then the, the bottom curve, let me redo that. The top curve is this blue curve. And then the bottom curve, let's put it in yellow. Okay, there's my bottom curve. Um, I need to know what I'm integrating from. So, so it's going from y equals zero to y equals what? So uh, because everything's gonna be oriented horizontally, I'm going to solve these for x. So the first one's easy, that's just x is y. The second one, y equals 4 minus x. Add x to the other side, subtract y to the other side, and you have that formula. Um, then you could set these two formulas equal to each other, this guy and this guy, to get that intersection, the y value of that intersection point. Okay, so you have y equals 4 minus y, in other words, 2y equals 4. In other words, y equals 2. So my integral is uh, guy is going to run from 0 to 2. The top curve, the blue curve, in terms of y, is uh, 4 minus y. And the bottom curve is the yellow curve, in terms of y is y. And then I have the integral of 4 minus 2y dy. And then integrating, that's 4y minus 2y squared over 2. So y squared from zero to two. So it'll be eight minus four, which is just four, okay? Um, I'm not gonna put the revolutions on there. It turns out I don't use those very much uh, later on. So um, I'll probably do a little project and maybe put some something on there. But uh, 7.4, that stuff you do see again. In particular, I want you to have memorized the arc length formula. Okay, so the integral from a to the b of the square root of one plus f prime of x squared dx. Okay, so you need that memorized. Um, let's look at maybe just one or two of those problems and we'll, we'll call it a day. Okay. Um, so number two, let's look at that guy. They give us the curve y equals two thirds times x squared plus one to the three halves. I'm going to need y prime squared. So y prime, I note, is uh, first uh, power rule. So I have 3 halves, x squared plus 1. 3 halves minus 2 halves is 1 halves. And then times the derivative of the guts, which is 2x. Simplifying a bit, I'll have x squared plus 1 to the 1 half times 2x. Um, when I put it into the integral, I need it squared. So I might as well just go ahead and square it. So it's going to be, you know, um, x squared plus 1 to the 1 half uh, times 2x squared, right? Uh, and to square that, you just kind of uh, distribute that exponent. So it'll be x squared plus 1 to the 1 half squared. And there you just multiply the exponents. And then 2x squared, you don't have to show all this work, just in case you wonder what the heck's going on. Um, so that first term will be x squared plus 1 to the first power, and then the second term will be 4x squared. 2x squared is 2x times 2x, which is 4. Okay. So now let's go to our integral. Um, I'll tell you the, the uh, interval that you're integrating over. So in this case, it's from 0 to 3. Those will be the limits on your integral. Then you have the square root of 1 plus x squared plus 1 times 4x squared dx. And you're looking for a way to get rid of that square root. Um, we can go ahead and distribute the 4x squared, so we get the square root of 
1 plus 4x to the fourth plus 4x squared dx. And then um, you can rearrange the terms and then try to factor it, right? So 4x to the fourth descending order of exponents, basically. And then note, well, hey, that's just uh, 2x squared plus 1 uh, times 2x squared plus 1. And that will allow you to unlock the um, guts there of the square root. So the square root of something squared is just the something. You get 2x squared plus 1 then, dx. And then that will be 2x cubed all over 3 plus x evaluated from 0 to 3. Um, that will be 18 plus 3, which is 21. Okay. One more. So basically on the test, you know, probably the majority of them, all I'm going to do is take these questions and manipulate them a little, Re, uh, replace sines with cosines, maybe replace a tan with a secant, uh, stuff like that, change numbers, all that jazz. Um, and then I'll, I'll pick some random ones just to keep, just to make sure you've been doing your homework. Um, but hopefully it'll be pretty straightforward on this test, uh, sine x. And then the interval from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. Okay. Um, so y prime is going to be 1 over sine x times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. So that's going to be cotan x. Um, so my arc length formula, the integral from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 of the square root of 1 plus cotan squared x dx. That's one of my Pythagorean identities, so starting with cosine squared plus sine squared equal 1. Divide everything by cosine or by sine squared and you get cotan squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. So this will turn into the integral of the square root of cosecant squared x dx. And then the square root of something squared just gives you the something, so that's cosecant x dx. This is one of the integrals I would give you the formula for if it was on the test. It's negative ln of cosecant x plus cotan x. Um, it's basically just the negative version with cofunctions of the secant formula. So if the secant formula is positive ln of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. But anyways, uh, I would give you that formula. Pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, evaluating on. Um, let's remind ourselves about the unit circle. Pi, 3 pi over 4 is here in the second quadrant. So negative ln, absolute value. Cosecant is the same as 1 over sine. Sine is positive in that quadrant. And um, the reference angle pi over 4 would give you root 2 over 2. Okay, um, This is cosecant, though. So it's, it's, it's uh, upside down. It'll just be root 2. Um, then uh, cotan in that ang in that quadrant is negative. Uh, uh, the cotan of pi over four is just one, but it's in the second quadrant, so it's negative one. And then minus negative will be plus ln absolute value cosecant of pi over four is just going to be root two again. And uh, then cotan of three pi over four sine. No, sorry, cotan of just regular pi over 4, so that's going to be plus 1 then. Okay. okay, so that should take care of business for us. Um, you know, as long as you can do all variations of those problems, you should be all right. You'll probably pass. Um, but if you really want to get the, the perfect A, if you're the A type personality, you're, you're going to want to go back and try to hit these other. Uh, questions in the sets as well. Make sure you can do those. Okay, so uh, that will be our first test and um, good luck to everybody and as usual thank you for watching and I will see you next time.